Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam, rasulullah, wa ba'd. The name of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last final messenger, Muhammad. As to what follows, family, friends, foes, haters, and hateettes, welcome back to another convert profiles of the features. On the features, we have a very, very, very special guest in Brother C. L. Edwards, also known as Abu Yazid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Aki? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, pretty good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So before we continue, we want you to like, subscribe, share, uh, hit me up on Patreon. And also the brother, uh, Abu Yazid, he has his own uh, YouTube channel called uh, uh, C.L. Edwards from pra Pastor to Muslim, correct? Preacher, preacher to Muslim. From preacher to Muslim, from preacher to Muslim, yes. Right, so hit him up yeah. there. Make sure you show him some love. Subscribe to his channel. For those of you who, know, who don't know who Abu Yazid is, he used to be a co-host with uh, David Wood. <laughs> he used to yep. co-host his, his show for several years, actually. He has a very interesting story. Right, so I'll let him take it from here. First of all, tell us about the um, how you came to Islam the first time because you became Muslim and then you left Islam for Christianity and then you became a Christian apologist and then you returned back to Islam again, right? So tell us about the first time you became Muslim. Yes. Well, the first time I became Muslim, I um, it began with me being interested in the nation of Islam. And I had intended to join the nation. And um, upon you know, further investigation and review, certain aspects of the uh, belief system, I didn't, I just really couldn't uh, buy into. Um, like which aspects in particular? This is like the beginning of. Um, the, you know, at that time, so I, I, I like the idea of, uh, you know, the Islamic theme of it. I like that. I like the, the unity among African Americans. I like that. Um, the whole idea of Farad Muhammad being God in person, I, didn't, I really didn't mind. I didn't really care because I came from a Christian background. So Jesus was supposed to be God in person. So what's the difference between Jesus and Farad Muhammad? You know, he's a different guy. Um, but then, they, you know, when they start talking about the mother wheel, um, the UFOs, um, you know, Yakub science, um, you know, the, 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 the origins of white people being on the island of Patmos um, and being grafted by a big head scientist into, I couldn't really get into that. Um, so then I started exploring the alternative to that, which was a 5% nation mm -hmm. or the nations of gods and earth to be, to be actually accurate. Um, so I started getting off into some of that. Um, but then this is like the beginning of, of the internet. This is like the late nineties. Yeah. Um, and I ran into certain people, Muslims, you know, and they were saying, don't do that. Don't, don't join those organizations. You need to uh, look into real Islam. Or they would say Orthodox Islam or Sunni Islam, which I, had, I really had no clue what, what any of that was. I had no idea what any of that was. So I, wa I want yeah. to backtrack so a little bit. I, I, right. begin I, wa I want to, so uh -huh. that uh, it's a lot of the Muslims, they don't really understand uh, some of the intricate details of what the nation of Islam believes, because all they think is, all oh, the nation, they just believe that the white man is the devil and that's it, right? But they don't understand some of the the details behind uh, 
their other uh, parts of their Akita, right? Like you were mentioning about the mothership, for example, right? And uh, what is the mothership and what is, and exactly is the purpose of the mothership according to the Nation of Islam? All right, so the, the mothership or the mother wheel is supposed to be based on the story about Elijah in the Bible that Elijah saw a vision of God and angels and it was like a wheel inside of a wheel. So they extrapolate that and say, well, that's what we call nowadays a UFO. And, uh, you know, Elijah in the Bible is kind of like a, 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 a type of prefiguring of Elijah Muhammad, of, Elijah, of uh, the nation of Islam. So now Elijah Muhammad, he's not alive anymore, but he, he somewhat is like alive. He's in the mother wheel. He's in the mothership um, and descend on the world and destroy America. Yeah. And destroy, you know, the white man. Yes. <laughs> and um, what about the grafting of the white man? Did you mention this was one of the things that you had a problem with, right? From the Nation of Islam. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So, go ahead. so there was a big head scientist. There was an individual who's called a, he was a scientist they called him the big head scientist because he has so much intelligence and his brain was so powerful yeah his um, name was he was on the island of patmos mm -hmm. cool. he was on the island of patmos which i believe is near uh, greece and uh he was engaging in some experiments where he was taking the genes of different black people and i guess doing gene editing almost where he was he grabbed, they call it grafting the genes to, till he created qualities of black people or African people, but only had their evil qualities. And, and because it, it, this human being had their evil qualities, he didn't have melanin. He was completely white. And then he made these group of people who were basically devils, evil white people, and unleashed them on the world. Yes. So and uh, in a summary. Yes. Do you know um, uh, Dwight York by any chance? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. He, he also has his own grafting uh, origin story, of, mm. right? So, uh, he says, um, back when he was uh, Ansar a lot, right? Okay. When they, when, when, they were, when they were wearing the thobes and, and they were selling the incense on the corners and whatnot in the 90s, right? He, he said, and he wrote that the white man was grafted from uh, a dog, no, the pig, right, rather, so not the white man, the pig was ra rather grafted from a dog, a cat, and a rat, right? He's talking about how the pigs came into mm -hmm. existence. So the same, the, I believe he is saying the same scientist as the yeah, group or whatever, he, yeah. he, he got, he did uh, genetic experience with a dog, a cat, and a rat, and eventually he you know, mix them all together and eventually you got a pig, right? Mm. You know, that's, that's his origin story yeah. for the pig, right? And why it's a dirty animal, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, because yeah, I, I have a nation background too. So for me, right, what put me off was saying the black man was God. I, I just couldn't get with that, right? You know, yeah. I was I was cool with the white man being the devil. <laughs> <Right? Yeah. laughs> <laughs> right? But I couldn't get down with, you know, Master Fra being God in person. And, you know, I used to always ask them questions about that all the time. You know what I mean? And uh, I, Well, I mean, it's problematic for so many different aspects. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, even with Master Fra Muhammad, who was not black, mm -hmm. some people say he was Pakistani. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they, they, different stories. Some say he's Pakistani. Some say that he was from Turkey. Um, even with him, there's a there's a story that says that he continued to live because he, he disappeared when he, he came to Detroit and he started spreading the message and he and he founded the Nation of Islam and then he disappeared. Um, one story is that he went to jail and then when he got out of jail, he moved to California and he became an Ahmadi. He became a, a Qadiani Imam, mm -hmm. and that the uh, uh, Elijah was still in contact with him. In fact, there, there are photos of a, of a you know, a Middle Eastern looking man 
who does look like Master Fraud Muhammad, but just older, who's a, who was a Qadiani imam, that people say that's him. Even photos with members of the Nation of Islam. So that's very interesting, you know. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So now you, now you, you um, uh, met with the 5%ers, right? The 5% Nation, which is a 5% Nation, for those of you who don't know, um, they are essentially an offshoot of the Nation of Islam, which was started by a former Nation of Islam member named Clarence 13X. And he wanted to basically teach the people the secret knowledge of the Nation of Islam, because a lot of people see the Nation of Islam as this type of religious group, but it's not so much of a religious group. It's more of a, you could say they're more like Freemasons, actually. They move more much more like Freemasons than, than, an, uh, than a religious group, you know, because they have their membership. You have to have a, a membership to join. You have to have this type of secret knowledge. They have the uniforms, you know what I mean? So he wanted to teach that secret knowledge to the regular black folk that, that only members of the nation of Islam should learn, right? So when he started doing that, they kicked him out and then he started was known as the the five percent nation, right? Where they have all this secret, secret stuff, right? <laughs> you know. But well, you know, some people say that the nation of Islam was patterned after um, what Noble Drew Ali was doing in yeah. Chicago, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and and what Noble Drew Ali was doing in Chicago was patterned ab after the Shriners. Yeah. Were you know a Masonic yeah. group? Masonic so there is that mace that that masonry link, you know. And they move like Masons. Yeah. You know what I mean? They the way the way that the whole organization is that you can say that it's okay, this is Freemason. Right? So it's more Freemasonry than Islam. You mm -hmm. know? That's how I see it anyways, you know? But uh yeah, yeah. continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like I said, I was online getting on message boards and whatnot. So just trying to dig up information because I didn't know anybody who was Muslim, even though I lived in Detroit. And, you know, Detroit in the metro Detroit area has one of the largest populations of Muslims in the United States of America. So there's tons of Muslims, mm -hmm. but, you know, they didn't talk to us. You know, they never, <laughs> they never gave us dawah and they never, they never spoke to us, you know, unless they, it was some type of business transaction. They were, you know, somebody owned a store or something, <laughs> or a gas station, but nothing, nothing in concerns about Islam at all. Um, and what was the demographic? And, and that's you know, um, as of now, it's it's very mixed. Mm -hmm. It's all, I think I saw some um, statistics. It's almost completely, perfectly mixed. It's like 25 percent uh, Indo Pakistani, twenty five percent Arab, twenty five percent Eastern European other, mm -hmm. you know, twenty five you know twenty five percent African American Muslim. So it's, mm -hmm. the area is completely, almost equally mixed between different groups of, of Muslims. Yeah. But you have a, you know, like the city of Dearborn, which is in South Detroit, which is, you know, a portion of Dearborn and Dearborn Heights, a large portion of it is almost entirely Arab mm -hmm. and, and, and Muslim. But a large percentage of those are, uh, are Rafida, uh, Rafida, Shia Muslim. But so, but still, like I said, None of that information about Islam has, for the most part, seeped out of those communities to the people around them. It's mm -hmm. kind of held in their communities. It's their own little cultural thing they do. Yeah. So yeah, and we're, we're, talking about, we're talking about the Arabs, the Pakistanis, these, these type of people, right? Yes, that's what okay. I was referring to. So, you know, I'm going online trying to find information about this. And... Um, so people were telling me, you know, you need to look into Orthodox Islam, Sunni Islam, real Islam. Okay, what is that? What 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 does that mean? And what why is that different than you know the, the nation of Islam and the nation of gods on earth? So, I, so slowly I began to you know get some people point me to certain websites, and this is like in the early days of the internet. You know, it's not like now, like you yeah. type in the word Islam or type in the word Quran and got 50,000 websites and yeah. YouTubes and all this other stuff is, is you have to actually search, look for stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I was able to track down certain things to get a, 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 a somewhat idea of Islam, the five pillars of Islam. 
um, the, the, you know, the, the, the station, the, the, the Quran, the Sunnah, things like this. Do you and, remember the websites the, that you found back in those days? It was a hot, it was, you know, it was things that people had posted on message boards, mm. um, you know, message boards, uh, articles that people just wrote themselves. There were some websites. I can't, re I can't even remember the names of these websites. Mm. Um, uh, I don't even think most, probably 99.9% .9 of those websites don't even exist anymore. But um, the one website I did encounter that, um, that you probably would know about was the Quran and Sunnah Society. Yep. The USS, yep. So their website. Yes. They were so, one of the first ones. They were one yes. of the first. Yep. Yes. So I, I you know, and that was I, I encountered that after I had taken Shahada at that point. Mm -hmm. So at that point, um, it was basically the cutter of a lot. I look back on it. Um, I started working in downtown Detroit. Mm -hmm. And and maybe less than a block away from where I worked at, there was an Islamic bookstore and an Islamic shop. Um, the brother, uh, Abdul Hamid, uh, a Pakistani brother, he sells clothes, incense. He sells, he's the, he was, he was the Walmart of Islam back in the day. <laughs> Cause he had everything, Kimars, uh, you know, all types of books, Qurans, he had a little bit of everything, you know, yeah. Ahmed D dot, um, VHS, tapes and all this other stuff. So I, I went in there and I started buying all types of stuff. I was buying, you know, CDs and VH, D dot tapes and, uh, you know, all this other stuff and, and buying books and, I was, you know, just consuming this information. And I had been doing that for a while, like almost half, almost half a year, maybe four or five months at that point. And I could see the brother talking to an African American brother. Um, you know, the African American brother had, you know, he had a thobe on and he had a, you know, a turban and they were pointing at me talking, I mean, they were talking about me. So the brother was like, you know, how long have you been Muslim? And I was like, well, I'm not Muslim. <laughs> He's like, you're not Muslim, but you come in here all the time. <laughs> you buy stuff. I'm like, yeah, I do come in here all the time and buy stuff because I'm interested in Islam, you know, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not Muslim. So the African American brother took me to the side. He grabbed a book. Um, it was a book about the five pillars of Islam. He went through, through the five pillars of Islam, explained each pillar to me, and he asked me, "Did I want to take the shahada?" And I said, "Yeah." And I took the shahada, and that's how I entered Islam. The first oh, time. The brother that you said is the African American brother, right? Yes. Right. See, yeah. so the, and I've never seen him. I've never seen him again. I've never seen him again. <laughs> he just gave you a I've up. never seen him again. I don't know where he, where he's crazy. at or what happened to him. I never <laughs> ran into him again. Never saw him again. Yeah. <laughs> even what, even going into the community he was a part of, even the community he was a part of, when I've gone into that community, he, I've never seen him there. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah. So when you became Muslim, which, um, uh, from the Islamic uh, communities, which one did you join? Were you with Tabligh? Were you with the Salafis? Who were you with? I didn't really join anybody for maybe the first three or four years. I was kind of bouncing around all over the place. Mm -hmm. So that the brother who uh, gave me Shahada, he was a uh, from the he was a Tabligi, mm -hmm. and there was a community of African American Tablikis in a city called Highland Park, and I went over there and I spoke to their sheikh. And he, you know, we sat and talked for hours. He was explaining the deen and Islam. And at, at the end of it, you know, he, you know, he invited me to be a part of their community. He, had, he, uh, you know, he had a niece. He was like, you can marry my niece. Um, <laughs> I was like, I, 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 you know, <laughs> so, uh, shallah, so I was like, okay. And, but after that, uh, I never went back to that community because, you know, I had just taken Shahada at this point, and I had I had one foot in Islam and and another foot in uh, the streets, really, at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all my friends are still in the neighborhood and yeah, yeah. up to neighborhood activities. So I'm still doing that, but I'm I'm still you know reading the Quran and going to Jumwa, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot like a lot of brothers do, mm -hmm. like a lot of brothers do. You know, I mean. I'm, Let's keep it real. It's brothers yep. that sell, sell drugs and then go 
to Juma and you know take some yep. of the drug, drug money and give it to Seneca. You know, Subhanallah, yeah. it's, it happens. Yeah. So, that, that's a real thing. That is a real thing. Yes. You know? And uh, with Islam, yeah. Islam now is coming to you know basically heal the social ills in any community, and Black people have a lot of social ills. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And when you see, when you find people online who are disparaging black people, you know I don't make, want to make this about this this particular individual, but there's a certain individual um, who is in the white supremacist circles, and he habitually speaks about black people, right? Mm -hmm. Like all the time, and he's got thousands of followers from the Muslims, you know, just basically loving this guy up. Right, and he has nothing good to say about he's black a, people. He's, he's Muslim. Yeah, he's Muslim. He's, he's Muslim. Popular, very popular, very popular, and, and so many. Um, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> who do you think it is? <laughs> well, I, I I'm aware that there's this uh, this this uh, this movement, especially when Trump was in office. Yeah, yeah, it's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, 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 right, uh, right movement, the uh, yeah. right movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've had uh, encounters with some of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had yeah. encounters with a couple of, with a yeah. few of those guys. Yeah, I mean, here you come, right? You are basically spitting in the face of, of black people, right? You're, t you're talking about George Floyd uh, dying of, of fentanyl and being a drug addict and blah, blah. Therefore, you sign off on black death. But Islam has a different, completely different uh, message than you. Totally different. You're siding, you're, you're out here openly siding with the oppressor. Just open like that. You know what I mean? You're uh, siding well, you know, with... I, I consider... Go ahead. I consider, you know, I consider those type of people house Muslims. Um, yeah. You know, just like... Oh, I consider even slavery, worse than that, man. I, I consider them like well, straight probably worse. traitors, traitors, you know what I mean? How you side with the open enemies like that against the oppressed, you know? I don't know. Well, you, see, you, I, can, I can give you the psychology. I can give you the psychology behind that. Mm. The psychology behind that, um, well, number one, they are racist themselves. So when yeah, they hear... Exactly. So, so when exactly. they hear... So these, they, they sit... These, these are Muslim brothers who want to, you know, listen to Rush, Rush Limbaugh and uh, mm. um, who's this other guy out it's another guy out in, in California. He's he, he was worse than uh, Rush Limbaugh. I forgot his name. He's kind of funny, but he, he's he's a boy. He's why all these different you know right wing talk radio people um, mm -hmm. and Fox News. They want to consume that. They consume it. They agree with it. And, oh, this is this is great. And then, but the psychology is, if we mirror or reflect their talking points and have our own sort of quasi-Islamic right-wing uh, movement, they'll understand we're not like the rest of those people. Mm -hmm. you know, don't, put us in the, don't put us in the same category with black people. Yeah. And don't put us in the same category with uh, the liberal Muslims. Don't put us even in the same category with the terrorists. Don't put us in the same category with the Wahhabis. Don't put us in the same category with any of those other people. We're like you guys. We're yeah. just like you. And that's so, exactly you know, the Let us in. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's what they want to be in those spaces. They prefer to be in the spaces of the enemy than to actually fulfill the purpose of Islam. So if you look at the Sahaba, many of them were drunkards. Many of them were womanizers. Many of them, you know, would sell out their, their family members. Like, these are real stories. You know what I mean? When the ayah came about... Um, uh, you know, the prohibition of, of alcohol, uh, it's recorded that the people dumped so much um, uh, wine in the streets that the, it was like running like a river. You see what I'm saying? And then they come in and spit in the face of black people because, because black people have uh, drug addiction, because black people are, are, the, are, are the, uh, the, the outcast, the lowly. When Islam says, we want your outcast, we want your lowly, we want your drug addicted. We want your drug dealers. We want your, your women who are out in the streets prostit prostituting. Islam is for all of you. Islam is, is here to turn those people into the pillars of society. 
And, you know, the, the, the thing about it that's so crazy is that it's well known any city you go to in North America, mm -hmm. uh, in the UK, anywhere else, mm -hmm. who are the people, when they actually embrace Islam, mm -hmm. who are the people who are the most headstrong about being on the dean? It's always the black, black. Who are most, yeah, so the people who are the vanguards of, of, of uh, the Sunnah. It's always it's black, black it's people. It's black people. Yes. It's always black people, right? These guys come to, come to to spit in our face. So we say we don't need them. We don't need your brother. Thank you. Just take it somewhere else. Go do your, your white supremacy thing. And on Yom Kiyama, we will see who's right and who's wrong. Even on this earth, we'll probably see it. Because the dua of the oppressed, there's no barrier between the dua of the oppressed and his Lord or her Lord. So you do you, right? We don't need you, straight up. Keep your brother. And, and, these, <laughs> and they, it, these brothers are actually trying to appeal to the, you know, the white male power structure, patriarch, as you know, Islam, Islam, it's, Islam teaches that too. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys can find a home in Islam, you know, or you can embrace us, you know, you know. It's, but what it's they're very doing is to a for that appealing to the white power structure, right? They spit in the face of the black oppressed and say that you're not oppressed, you're making all this stuff up, right? That they have a different religion going on. You understand? Mm. They have some yeah. complete different where in the Quran does Allah praise the oppressor at the expense of the oppressed? That's what these guys do. So they follow the ways and the paths and, and the the, 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 what you would call it, tariq of the oppressor, to get in good with the oppressor. We call those people sambos and house negroes. You know what I mean? They're white house negroes. <laughs> you're white, but you're a house negro. You, you love Massa and them. You, oh, you want to be Massa and them. You know, just with your thobe and your kufi. That's it. And the, anyway, and, and, go ahead. And the, and the reality is, the reality is that that side, that right wing side, despises Islam. Yeah. They absolutely despise Islam. Mm -hmm. And to think that you're going to find a place with them, that you're going to join with them, that you're going to you know, form some brotherhood with them, or you're going to convince them that you're, we're just like, we're just as good as you. We got the same values you have. You know, we're just like you. You know, you know don't consider us like them. Consider us like you. If you're gonna to, to actually think you're gonna talk them into doing that? You're crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They will never accept Islam. Mm -hmm. and now, says that in the Quran? if you, he says it explicitly in the Quran. They will never ever ex accept you. You know, they won't be happy in t with you until you accept their ways. Allah says it exactly. explicitly in the Quran. They they out there changing and, and, and twitching and twirling for white zaddy in them. You know what I mean? And, and that's and that's the historical purpose of immigration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, if you look at immigration in in I'm speaking about America. Mm -hmm. Um immigration in America has always been for the purpose of increasing the numbers of the dominant right. the culture. dominant society. Yes, you, dominant you, white you, society. Yes. And Coming as well as you're expected to Mm -hmm. As well as they, they started considering the Irish and Italians right when they participated in the oppression of black people. That's when that, and that's all that immigration is. That's what the model minority is. When you come over here from your Muslim countries, right, and you get the bank loans, you get the, the, the student loans, whatever, you get um, affirmative action. Because you, what you don't realize when you're getting all these programs which were designed for black people, right? You're locking out black people in the out of the same programs that was meant for them, so that you can point your fingers at black folk and say, "You see, I did it. Why can't you?" That's all that immigration is. That's what the model minority yes. is. It's a, it's been you're they've the been token. Since the early 1900s. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, you're the token. Uh, yeah. You're the token. Mm -hmm. So they can point out their they can they can point out their, their organization and see. We've got Khabib over here. Uh, Khabib's a nice guy. You know, he's a hard worker. You know, we're not racist. 
Yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah, the country good could be pat you on top of the head. <laughs> you know, and and they don't have to hire any black people. Uh, one day, uh, me and a couple of uh, me and some friends in this organization that I was uh, that I was that I'm a part of, we were sitting at, at a, a local eatery in, in Houston. Uh, it's called Busy Boy. And we were having some Philly cheese steaks and just, you know, taking it easy. So that brother comes in to the ice cream parlor that's next to it. Mm -hmm. So I go in there. Our, our business was done with the with the organization that I was that I'm a part of. Our business was done. So I went in there to talk to that brother. I said, uh, brother, hey, I'm looking for a gig, man. I, I want to get in. And I know that you have the authority. You, you're in a position of influence and you could help me. Brother, what this brother told me, it turned my stomach. Wallahi billahi tallahi mm. I, I was upset. I was upset. But I was sitting up there looking at him as he was telling me this, these things and, and trying to justify it. Mm -hmm. And really, I, I, I wanted to just, there was, I mean, I wanted to just do something really bad. But alhamdulillah, you know, I, I just sat back and, and I, I gave the brother a look of disgust, mm -hmm. disgust, because this is what the brother said to me. He said, brother, I can't hire you. I said, why not? You're, you're, you're the head of the, 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 the department. Why can't he said, because everybody will look at me and say, why did you hire that African-American? Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that? This, he, he said, can you they, 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 he, he said, they will ask him, mm -hmm. why did you hire that African-American? Mm -hmm. And this is your Pakistani Muslim brother, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And, and, how, and, and long, I said, how long have I been saying that these are not your brothers? They're your bro crazy, he was your brother. He was your brother yes. when it was time to do tablik. He was your yes. brother when it was mm -hmm. time. It's time to you know for you to speak. You know when he's trying to build his his when he's trying to build his uh party party. Now he that he's but when it comes time to the real nitty gritty, Islam is out the window. And what again? One more time. One more time for the people, please. <laughs> <laughs> one more. He told me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you know, like again, he he told me. He said, uh, you know, if I hire you. Mm -hmm. These people will question me. Why did I hire this African American? Uh, so he he said, "No, brother. I, you know, he said it, it's bad that it's this way." He said, "But all of the the Indians and, and, and Pakistanis they have have cornered the 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 IT market in America." Mm -hmm. He said, "All of the the contract companies that send out people to different locations mm -hmm. to to do these contract work because a lot of times what happens is that they the the companies or uh, the di the different entities, businesses, they don't hire direct. What they do is hire a contract company, mm -hmm. a con a company that will supply them with the with the employees. So mm -hmm. in in what happens then is they don't have to pay the taxes, they don't have to pay this for yeah. the employee. If the employee gets up, you know, there's it, it leaves them of a of a lot of uh, 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 things that they would have to be uh, responsible for with the employee if yeah. they hire an outside contracting company. He, so he said, all of these contracting companies, which is true, mm -hmm. most of these contracting companies are Indian and Pakistani owned. Mm -hmm. And he said, so, you know, what they do is send him different employees. Mm -hmm. And he, for some reason or another, maybe an unwritten code that they have that, that you must hire within our kind. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 it uh, this was uh, something that it hurt me, bro. It, it really, it hurt me. It, it made me kind of sit back and uh, really um, reflect on, you know, are these my brothers? How many of these, well, I don't know if you know how many, but what are the chances, let's put it reward like that, that this uh, Pakistani, South Asian, wherever he's from, right, that he took advantage of affirmative, affirmative action programs in order to get to this uh, position, in my opinion, it, it's uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. He definitely used that to get that position. Mm -hmm. That that was a part because there was an an initiative in that particular school district. Because maybe about three or four years before, they said that the the leadership in this school district, the leadership didn't reflect the uh, the, the 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 population. Yes. The leadership didn't reflect the population of this particular school district. Yes. So because the leadership didn't reflect it, there was a lot of uh, 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 talk and discussion between the school board and, and, and the people, and mm -hmm. they changed that. And I'm, I, I'm almost positive mm -hmm. that he was a recipient because uh, of this. Of affirmative action. Okay. There's a yes. specific reason why I asked this question, okay? Mm -hmm. First reason is because affirmative action was specifically designed for who? 
African Americans. For African Americans, Black people. It was specifically designed mm -hmm. for Black people. Then what they did was that they said, oh, we're going to put minorities into affirmative action. Now, I want you to think about that just for a second. All right? Now, who is a minority according to uh, uh, the power structure in the States? Who is a minority? Anybody who is not a white man is considered a minority. Absolutely. Now, what does that mean in terms of affirmative action? This program that was meant specifically for Black people, over 50% of the people who, uh, which we call benefit from affirmative action, do you know who it is? White women. Absolutely. White women, white women are minority. Remember what I said? Everybody Absolutely. who's not a, a white man, they make them a minority. So now imagine white women are benefiting from an affirmative action program specifically designed for black people. But not only that, they put who else? Who else is the minority? Remember, everybody who is not a one man. They put the brown people in it. They put the Chinese people in it. They put the uh, South Asians in it. They all take advantage of what? Affirmative program, action. Affirmative action. And what percentage? of black people, both men and women, get to take advantage of the program that was meant for black people to begin with? You know what percentage? Nine tenths. Nine tenths of 1%. Wow. Nine tenths Ridiculous. of, that's both men and women, black. So wow. this program that was designed specifically for black people, this Pakistani, this Muslim brother of yours takes advantage of that program that was designed specifically for black for black people. For me, and he built his wealth based upon the program that was specifically designed for black people. And when a black Muslim brother asked him for a job, what does he tell him? Repeat it again, please. He says that, you know, I can't do that because if I do, I will be questioned about who and why did you hire this black, this African American guy? And may Allah question him on Yomo Kiyama, I mean, who and I mean, why he did not hire that black African American I mean, Muslim on Yomo Kiyama. I mean, I mean say Amin. I mean. And and uh, but they but you know but they I think these brothers and sisters, I don't know if they consciously understand that the price you're going to have to pay to to assimilate into a um, to the white power structure of North America or anywhere else in the West. Is you're gonna to have to give up your Islam, yeah, that, uh, because and it's these, happening anyways. This, I mean, you're gonna to have to pass. This is just passing. Get rid of that. Get rid of that Arab name. Get rid of that Pakistani name. Get rid of that, you know, foreign name. Get rid of that beard. Get rid of that head hijab, and get rid of that you know, all that Islam stuff, and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And that's the price. Yeah, straight up. I if you see it, I'm, I'm you know. I even saw a individual by the name of Muhammad. Mm. I worked at a company of individual by the, na the name of Muhammad. I didn't even know his name was Muhammad because everybody called him Mike. Mm. <laughs> and I, I didn't even know he was Arab. Mm -hmm. he, he just like a white guy named Mike. A white guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And his, his name is Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> subhanAllah. Like, you, I mean, you're out here, and he's just blend, he's just passing. Yeah. He comes to work, he's Mike, and he he drives back home to Dearborn, Michigan, and he's he's Muhammad again. That that's the entire goal. That's what they did with the Irish. That's what they did with the Italians. Now they're doing the same thing with the Arabs and the Pakistanis and the Afghanis and whatever. You know, the same thing. It's like no different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, we'll let you continue with your conversion story. We went off on a little yeah. tangent there, but yeah, I think it was beneficial. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, I, at that point, you no, know, I, I, I converted. I'm basically bouncing around. Maybe one Friday I'll go to this masjid. Next Friday I'll, I'll go to the Juma on this masjid. Whatever. I'm just, you know, I, at this at this point I was getting on the bus. So I didn't even have a car. I was get on the bus and go. Look, I would look up the name of a masjid, get on the bus and go there. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I bounced around to various different communities and in the Detroit metro area. Um, I, being online, like I, I said earlier, I discovered the Quran and Sunnah Society. And sure enough, there was a, they had a bookstore in the Masala in Detroit. And I started going over there and the brothers, uh, 
who affiliated with a, a masjid in Detroit, Masjid Tawheed on the west side uh, of Detroit. And I happened, again, the cutter of a law. I just happened to live down the street from Masjid Tawheed. Oh, Didn't wow. even know it was there. <laughs> so I, I, moved into a, I moved into an apartment building and I didn't even know that I, I had moved down the street from Masjid Tawheed, you know. And so I began uh, going to the Masjid. That's when I, you know, started learning uh, uh, about the Sunnah and implementing the Sunnah. And, and that was my life for a number of years. Yeah. And uh, this was kind of like, the, this is the tail end of uh, the Quran and Sunnah Society. It was kind of going down at this well, point. Yeah. But, they, yeah, the, you know, start. Brothers was, they were actually they had a, a, the forefront of um, Dawa back in those days. They were mm. very popular and they were making moves, right? Mm. But then the fitna happened. The fitna happened, yes. The fitna yeah, happened. The fitna happened. You know, uh, Islam, particularly Salafia, was spreading like wildfire in those days, and Quran and Sunnah society was a large part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, they were a major part of that because they were bringing scholars from um, uh, Jordan, they were bringing Sheikh Albani students, you know, regularly, you know, they were, mm -hmm. they had um, mm -hmm. programs, a lot of different programs, you know, they were very active in Dawa, especially in the black community, right? So, mm -hmm. and then the fitna happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> and yes. I don't believe the fitna, yeah. I don't believe the fitna was an accident at all. I'm not naive enough to think that this was a a organic fitna. No, I do believe 100% that um, the enemy got his slimy, bloody hands involved in our affairs again and destroyed the Dawa with the help of Abu Khadija from Spubs. Right? So, mm. and there's just too many coincidences. I did all kinds of series on that already. I'm not going to talk about them again. <laughs> all right. But I did okay. a lot of videos about them, right? And how, how, uh, you know, treacherous they are and how they they uh, get involved in fraud and all kind of stuff, right? And they just get away with it. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, that's what I believe, you know? So, go ahead. But I, 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 saw it, I saw it take place because I saw, you know, certain group brothers split off into different groups mm -hmm. and one group didn't like the other group. Yeah. Brothers didn't go make, give salams to the other group of brothers and uh, that, you know, that sisters is, talked about other groups of sisters behind the park. White supremacy 101, bro. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. You know what I mean? And that's what I believe happened. And yes. people think that white supremacists can't get in, inside of Islam. Meanwhile, they've been doing that for a better part of 400 years. You know what I mean? So, yes. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, so, I mean, they did it with the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, that's well documented. Yep. You know, that's Very well documented that um, they did it with the, um, you know, the Black Panthers. Panthers and, they, yeah. and we were talking before the show, the show started, many of the Black Panthers were Muslim. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, they did it with, in, different, in various different, every single organization mm -hmm. that, that was not under their control, um, started by them, not headed by those who they appointed or that, you know, were for them. They did the same divide and conquer they where they were over and over and over again. And, right? and, they, and the they whole did thing was all the black grassroots groups. So black people understand infiltration when we see it. Mm. You understand? So and that's how I see it. I see it as one hundred percent infiltration. No and, but the, but with with the, the Salafi Dawa, it was even easier because now you got the internet. Yeah, and remember, it's not like. Freud and Spuds in those days, they were the ones who were controlling the internet because it was just them. They were like, it was Spuds, Troy, and then QSS, right? And then some, mm -hmm. but nobody else was was um, was controlling the Salafi airwaves. It was just those guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And so Spuds, they, they're the ones who are saying the Orlam are with us and blah, 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 blah. And they were putting out these, these, um, uh, Teskiyat from Muhammad, uh, 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 Muhammad Medkhali and Uwait al Jabri and I, the ulama are with us, and we don't know Arabic. We're thinking, oh, the ulama are with them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're thinking. Meanwhile, it's gangland happening in Salafi, in Salafi and they just totally destroyed the Dao. Like, 
just dismantled it. You know, just dismantled it. And no, nobody even talks about them. Nobody, they're like nothing now. You see what I'm saying? They, the job is complete. It's mm. finished. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, QSS, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, for me, you know, that's, that stuff has, you know, deep meaning because, you know, my father took Shahada at a QSS conference. Oh, wow. You know, wow. you know, subhanAllah. So that, that has meaning. That was, that had meaning for me. Yeah. That, it, it, it affected it. I was able to transform. You talk about, you know, getting rid of the harms. I was able, when I connected with those brothers, I was able to transform my life by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what were you doing giving up. before that, before you connected with those brothers? Yeah, you know, before that, I'm, you know, drinking, smoking weed, going to the club, selling weed, um, doing petty robberies, hanging out with drug dealers, hanging out with gang members, mm -hmm. everything that everybody else, all the other youth mm -hmm. in my area were doing. So I was able to give all that up and just everything, life became the, I life literally became going to the masjid, Quran and Sunnah. Mashallah. How can we, what, no, I keep, what Sunnah did you learn about? Tell me a hadith that you, that you, you found with a Sunnah so I can implement it. And I'll tell you one about that I found. That's what, that's, you're, that you're, became you're life. You were, you, were, you were sharing the Sunnah, you know what I mean? And it was building your Iman, you know what I mean? That's that's how it was back then. Exactly. Before the thing. <laughs> that's exactly yes. Yes. And you know, so uh, for me there was a deep uh emotional attachment to the dawah. Mm -hmm. This is how I changed my life. And you know, and I was on this quest to find the truth. Because one of what one of my handles that I still use on the internet is Seeker two four eight, so I was seeking for the truth. Like, what is the truth? Mm -hmm. It's a thousand different religions, a thousand different theories, conspiracy. Everybody claims they have the truth. What is the truth? Mm -hmm. So I, I found the truth in this. So you know, then when the when the fitness really started kicking in, and like I said, I see you know brothers that I knew that wouldn't speak to each other, uh, yeah. or were saying things about each other and i'm just trying to be i'm not take i'm not try, i'm trying not to take sides i'm not trying to take the side of the qss brother versus the sp brother you know <laughs> i'm you know i'm giving salams to both brothers i'm that like i'm i'll come over here and kick it with you and give you salams and i'll come over and kick it with them and give them salams so i'm not trying to pick a side yeah you know and but as you as you probably remember you know the gauntlet was almost put down like you have to pick a side must pick a side, yep. You must pick you know, a side. Who you with? <laughs> you know, Bloods or Crips? Who you with? <laughs> you know, Bloods, Crips, Vice yep. Lords, Vice Lords of GD. Who are you with? Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't yep. be neutral. Mm -hmm. no, you, you can't cannot. be neutral. You have to take a side. And and I, I just witnessed the uh, the destructiveness that 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 um created. It, it I saw marriages, people's marriages were destroyed. Yeah. You know, you know how. People literally, people's houses got split in half yep. <laughs> because of these issues. Because of these issues, you know, That's children true. against parents, parents against children, mm -hmm. um, and you know, inside the inside the same community, split in half. Mm -hmm. People fighting over, you know, who who has the keys to the masjid, you know, um, yep. things that, like that this. Happened. <laughs> that happened. It happened. Yep, straight up. It happened. So, yep. Subhanallah, and. Um, I had gotten married by this time, and um, I got married, and the sister who I got married to, we really didn't see eye to eye on implementation of the dean. Mm. You know, she really wasn't, I mean, she went to the masjid, and, you know, she was, she was among the Salafis, but she, she really wasn't trying to, you know, live according to the Sunnah like that. You know, you know, you do. You know, she famously told me, hey, "You do too much. You do way too much." You know? <laughs> <laughs> They've got you brainwashed. You got you doing way too much, and Subhanallah. So that that was a that was just a, a lot of fitna all by itself. There's fitna going in the community. There's fitna online. There's fitna in the household. And then you know, I had my son, and then you know, 
me and her split up and she w she went and got a cola and ended the marriage. And uh, my son was uh, for like maybe the almost for a year, I didn't even see my son mm. the whole entire time. He was kept away from me. And I had I had to move away from the community because I had to I didn't have any place to go. I, I moved in with some family members uh, oh, wow. on the complete other side of town, you know, and didn't have no right? What's that? No. Well, well, a family member who had taken Shahada, but they really weren't practicing at the time. Okay. Uh, um, so I'm in the household, the household also. And so it's, it's different family members in the household, some of the Christian, and, and me and the, uh, another family member who are Muslim. And I, I'm over there and, you know, I'm going through financial hardships at the time. because so I'm basically starting over again um, financially. And I'm like, man, like what happened? Yeah. Like everything fell apart, yeah. you know? Like everything literally fell apart. Yep. And I could just like when it when I came into the into the Dawa, I literally remember like this is the happiest point of my life. Yep. This, that was the happiest point of my life. I never experienced brotherhood, camaraderie, um, purpose, direction, mm -hmm. discipline. Like I never experienced that. It was the happiest point of my life. And up to that point, my, my life hadn't point. been that that happy. <laughs> there was a point where in the, in the younger generation, they, have been, they don't get it because they've never seen it in their entire lives, right? Like when I became Muslim, like I, mm -hmm. I divide my Shahada in stages, right? So I'm like you, I, I, I came in through the nation, right? And actually I took my Shahada, right? I didn't join a nation, but they were the reason why I became Muslim. You feel me? Because I listened to Farrakhan and, and separate things but i really didn't know much about islam at all like nothing right because there's no information about islam so i'm just like this general muslim right and then uh troy started and i was uh part of that back in those days right i was one of the original members right and we started making dawah on the streets we're just making dawah just a bunch of brothers that was troy and people think troy does this hardcore hard line you know just refute everybody but it didn't start like that it started just a bunch of brothers who wanted to call the people to Islam. And that's what we did. You understand? And then we found out about Salafia and it just blew up. Like Salafia was growing everywhere. And what you're talking about, when we used to go to the masjid, we used to love going to the masjid. We always wanted mm -hmm. to be at the masjid. Like all of us, we would enjoy going to the masjid, right? Now in 2021, not just me, but even my own kids think going to the mission is like a chore. Mm. Because there's no there's no brotherhood happening in the mission. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's not that com yeah. camaraderie like it was back in the day. You know, we, we used to be enthusiastic about calling people to Islam, calling making dawah to the people, always giving the salams. You know, there was a brotherhood activities, these type of things, right? Uh, now, because the the mes masjid now, and I keep saying it, the mes masjid in the West have turned into cultural centers. So now you got to decide which masjid you're going to go to Tablighi masjid, you're going to go Somali masjid. There's all this cultural stuff happening, and the the cultural Muslims don't reach out, have any outreach to the community. And with that fitna, when that fitna happened, that when Salafia was at its peak and it was growing, all of a sudden you had people. Throwing people off the men has throwing people left, right, center, left, right, center. And next thing you know, the Salafi is like nothing. And the Salafis are known as people who cause problems. And up until this day, we the Salafis, we have the stigma because of who? Because of Spubs and Detroit in them. That's why we have that stigma. Because of those guys. Not because Salafia is wrong, but because those guys, be, through the internet, the, the website, um, spubs and the website for it propped themselves up of, as the vanguards of the sunnah and people went on the internet and saw that and they said oh these are the vanguards of the sunnah you understand with no qualifications no studying nothing you know what I mean they became the vanguards of the sunnah because they put themselves in that position you see what I'm saying 
And that caused um, um, the Dawa to be incredibly hurt. And up until this very day, people are still brainwashed on, on that stuff. But because I became Salafi before that, I know what Salafi was before that. You know what Because I saw it. I lived it. You know what And I lived through the fitna. And I saw the fitna. And I'm, I have something to compare it to. I have, I have, I have uh, you know, uh, uh, what you want to call it? Uh, the Salafi playbook before, uh, Troy and Spuds before, before all this fitna, before Sheikh Rabi, you know, I, I was Salafi at the time of Sheikh Albani, Rahimullah. You know, I was Salafi at the time of Sheikh Mbaz, Rahimullah. I was Salafi in these times, not in the in the the Sheikh. I I saw Salafi in the Sheikh Rabi and Sheikh Ubaid era. I saw that, but I saw this too. So I know there's something going on here. You feel me? So what you're saying about the camaraderie, mm -hmm. camaraderie and the brotherhood, this existed. This was a real thing. So this is a proof that yes, Islam is true. Yes, Islam is real. Yes, Salafia is the, is the haq. And if you want it, you are the ones who have to stand up for it. You are the ones who have to really want it and, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, stand up for the truth because there's always going to be somebody trying to separate you from the truth. And they will come wearing a thobe, wearing a beard, wearing an abaya. That I, that's why they will come to you. Because that's how shaitan works. He comes to you in a, in a form that you're familiar with, not in the form that you're not familiar with. You see, you feel me? So I, I can vouch for everything you're saying right now. I'm like, I'm feeling it because I'm like, I'm going back to those days, eh? right? I'm like, yeah, I was so lucky before all this. Right, we didn't have this at that time. Why we got it now? You know what I mean? It's because of these guys, because of Abu Khalid, because of uh, Spubs and them, you know, because of Muhammad uh, uh, Madhali and and these these types. That's what happened. These foreigners all up in our affairs. Before you came in our affairs, we didn't have any problems. Now you came in our affairs. You put yourselves, you prop yourself up for it. Run into an, an uh, to uh, Muhammad Madhali or Sheikh Rabi to get fat towel against other Muslims on a weekly basis, got people afraid of you, afraid of a, a PDF, afraid of a, a, of a, a rut, a refutation, you know what I mean? People walking on eggshells because of you guys. And you destroyed families, communities, uh, misogyny, you know? All the good that was done, you were destroyed. You're responsible for it. So it comes to a, a point where, you know, hmm. what is the individual going to do now? Do you really want this Islam? Do you really want this Sunnah? Or are you going to let somebody else at any time come and mess it up for you? It's like a test from Allah, you know what I mean? So, but anyway, sorry for, for that rant, bro. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> Go ahead, man. But, but very much so. It, it, was, it was a test from Allah. Um, like, like I said, for me, you know, my whole entire life was built upon that. Mm. So for that to start falling apart and to crumble, mm. that was like... You know, for me, that was like a family member getting diagnosed with AIDS. You know, that's like, you know, seeing your, you know, your parents in the hospital, you know, on life support. Yeah. It's like, this is, this is what my whole entire life is built on. Mm -hmm. This is my whole entire life is built upon this. And now it's crumbling and following, fall, falling apart. Mm. And you know, Especially like you said, it, turned, it was changing lives, particularly in the black community. Like you said, you know, this was a normal thing. When 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 people who were in the streets drinking alcohol, selling drugs, doing drugs, whatever, going partying, whatever, and then they come to the Salafis and they're changing their lives, and which was the norm back then. And then it just stopped. That that part of Islam just stopped to favor refutations. So as long as you are not a little bit at, you can still smoke your weed, you can still have your, and this is exactly what happened. Mm. You know what I mean? Because you're not a little bit at. Because it's worse, as, as uh, one of these uh, celebrities, please, but they live in the yard, he said, you know, I'd rather see my, my son come out of the house of a brothel than it come out the house of a little bit at. And you take that, that uh, you know, 1300 year old statement and apply it to black people who are not used to uh, 
uh, monogamous relationships, who are not used to seeing communities without drugs and alcohol and violence, who are not used to stability, you're going to take that athar and give it to Black people who are living in a hellish condition and say, you see, it's okay. It's okay for you to smoke weed. Just don't be out of it. And that's just like Christianity. It's just like Christianity. And that's exactly what's happening. Exactly it's what's just happening. It's like Christianity. That's why in Philly, right, I saw a video the other day of this video clip. A brother took his his, his camera phone to the, to the graveyard in Philly, Philly. Pure, fresh graves. Fresh. Fresh graves of Muslims. Mm -hmm. Killing each other. It's just fresh graves, all for just recently done. It's like, what's happening in our communities? Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in your communities. It's cool to be violent because you're not Ahul Bira. The following clip contains bad language. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> The reason I'm here today, we must have, I need you to make do off from a little brother here. But um, this is Philly, man. Which I what y'all got going on here, man? Like this shit is sickening, man. Like y'all changing lives, man. Like for generations, y'all killing mothers, y'all killing sisters, y'all killing brothers, y'all killing sons, y'all killing nephews. For what? By the internet beef? By the chick that's whoring out here anyway? About a block that ain't even yours? about money that you're going to get to go spend and give it to somebody. It's not like you want no money out here to, to save. Y'all niggas want money to spend. That's what y'all doing? That's what y'all doing out here, right? Yo, shit is sickening. This shit is sickening. Talking to the funeral director, he says he get them two, three times a day. That's what we doing to our Muslim brothers, huh? We're not protecting each other. I mean, if we ain't protecting each other, you're definitely letting anything happen to them. That's what we doing, huh? <laughs> I gotta wake up. I gotta wake up, man. Let me tell you like this. Everybody must face death. You out here pushing play. You think you parking shit, um, putting people through grief about their kids. You'll be here one day also, you know what I'm saying? Just know when the law asks you about your deeds, your good deeds, that's what it gets you to Jenna in paradise. Anything else, be done with. I gotta do better, man. I gotta do a whole lot more better, man. This is sickening. I'm, I, I hate to say that I'm even from Philly, like, you know what I'm saying? Not that it's better anywhere else in any other country or any other state, but I can only worry about what's where I'm at right now, you know what I'm saying? Make a change one block at a time, one house at a time, one block at a time. It's crazy. All fresh grades, bro. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. 